Welcome back. I am so glad to see you back again. So in today's video, I'm going to be painting on this wooden panel. And this is the first time I'm trying painting on this. But hold on, what's happening behind me? Anyways, coming back to the painting, today I am also going to be prepping and priming my canvas really well. For that, I am going to be using this GAC 100. Now you must be wondering why this because all these panels are also going to go to my art store so I really like to take great care of them. So this will just prevent all the molds and moisture on my panel. So that's the reason I'm going to be you know priming it on both the sides by using GAC 100 first and this is completely optional. You can enjoy making this painting on even acrylic painting paper. It's super easy and simple to make so you can just not stress about the canvas that I'm using or the wooden panel that today I'm going to be using. So just go ahead and enjoy on any surface that you want. Alright, so I'm first going to be applying this layer on both the sides and then when it's going to dry completely then I'm going to be adding gesso on the top and that's just one to two layers of gesso and here as you can see I'm using a wedge tool. So this just helps me to get this even layer on the wood but this is absolutely optional. You can always use a scale for applying gesso and of course the normal way by using the brush. Here is my cutie checking out everything is good and now mom is ready to paint. And this is the inspiration right in front of me. I wish I had real flowers but I couldn't manage that. So I'm going to be using these artificial ones to just you know take some reference and start painting. My panel is all ready and now let's go ahead and enjoy painting. So in step one, we are going to be painting the background. For that, I took this flat brush and I always suggest you to first dip it in water so that you know the brush becomes a little moist. Remove the extra water by using a tissue paper and this is because you know it will allow us more time to do the blending part and also the mixing of the color becomes really easy and smooth. So here I took this aqua green color. It is not at all important that you choose the colors that I'm using. So use any light shade of blue. And again, just to let you know, I am going to be changing the background in the later part of the video. So if you want, you can always lighten down the shade because I will realize that I painted the background very saturated and I did make some changes at the end. And here is my color palette for the flowers. I always like to keep all my colors ready. And by using a filbert brush, I'm first deciding where exactly I want my flowers. So I'm just, you know, marking it by using this filbert brush. As you can see, my strokes are very loose, very relaxed. You don't have to be precise. It's just going to be very abstract style of painting. And then I'm using this beautiful magenta color. And if in case you don't have a beautiful pigment of pink, I'll highly recommend using fluorescent pink color, you know, to your color mix and it becomes so beautiful. So once I painted this, I really didn't like the background. It was so saturated and vibrant. So I changed it to a very lighter shade. And yes, I just added some white color on my background and blended everything together. And now we are all set to paint the flower. So in step one, I first marked the center part of the flower, knowing that where exactly I want the flower to be. And by using my filbert brush, I make some white and this fluorescent pink color together. And as you can see how I'm holding my brush, I usually, you know, like to hold my brush like this sometimes to get that petal effect. And this is completely optional, of course. Whatever style you like, whatever way you feel comfortable in, just add these basic simple petals there by using a filbert brush. And of course, you can use a flat brush as well. This is completely optional. Now here I'm also using the color directly, meaning I have not added any water to my color mix. This in result helps me to create these beautiful thick petals, which I really want, you know, it also gives that beautiful effect. At the same time, blending and mixing becomes really easy here by using this kind of thick color. So I'm just using that and creating strokes like this. And my reference image is right in front of me. So it makes really easy for me to just, you know, get the colors, to get the petal direction. And everything becomes easy if you have a reference image or a reference object right in front of you.
got ready with the base of our flower and now we're going to be adding more highlights on the top so that's going to happen on the top layer or on the corner edge of the petal so that you know it looks more 3d and at the same time because this is wooden panel so it's absorbing a lot of my color so I really need to apply a minimum two layers and now to just blend and mix this flower with the background I'm using this makeup brush and this is completely optional if in case at this point of time you don't have it, you can just use your finger and try to merge and blend the corner ends of your petal so that it gets beautifully merged with the background and sets that beautiful abstract mood to your painting. So that's really important that you also, you know, use your finger or if in case you have this makeup brush, you can always go ahead and use it. And I think they work better than any expensive more brushes and all those, you know, expensive art supplies that you find on art stores but i believe why to miss out on these brushes which are so inexpensive and they also give amazing results so once i have added all those leaves and this was sap green color i love using sap green color it gives more natural look to your paintings and by using my makeup brush again, I'm just trying to add some blue shade on the background. I just felt that this area required some more, you know, bright color there. So background is a constant process. So make your background the way you want. It's going to be beautiful. You can just experiment on different other shades as well. I will highly recommend that, you know, you just play with your heart and choose the color that you really want. And you can always make it really dark or light according to your choice. And on the final step, I'm going to be adding some more flowers and those beautiful foliages and ending it up by adding some more highlights on the top. Final step, I'm just going to be sprinkling some color here and there and that's completely optional. This is the final texture layer that I add on the top and once it is done, I'm also going to be applying a layer of varnish on top of it. And here it is. This is the final look. This painting is also available for sale on my art store. You can check out the link in the description box below. And to enjoy more such fun activities in your free time, you can check out Skillshare and enjoy classes on so many different topics. I am so glad that they are also the sponsors of today's video. There are so many different amazing teachers out there. And the fun fact is, there are so many Indian teachers now on this platform, so you can learn from them as well. My dear friend Ankit Bhatia has also launched his course on Skillshare about creating travel videos. He is an amazing cinematographer, filmmaker, and you can learn a lot about, you know, basics of video making, video editing, and so much in his class. Check out the link in the description box below to get your free one month trial of Skillshare. And I'll see you very soon in my next video. Till then, take care and thanks for watching. Bye.